Those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I really like the great outdoors. I'm fascinated by the amazing things you see out here. I make these videos with the hope that others will come out west to see these amazing places for themselves. And you should come out here because video just can't capture the magnitude of the place because the West is big. The power of nature, well, it really kind of fascinates me. Time is nature's primary tool. It took hundreds of thousands of years of repeated glaciation cycles to create the spectacular valleys, lakes, and views of the Northern Rockies. The canyons of the American Southwest took even longer, at least five million years. This huge remnant of an ancient volcano formed underground. It was wind and the occasional rain that removed thousands of feet of dirt and rock. And today, Shiprock rises nearly 1,600 feet above the desert floor. I'm based in North Texas, which isn't exactly known for its natural beauty. It's incredibly flat and even more incredibly hot and increasingly full of traffic as more and more people come here chasing economic opportunities. But time even had a hand in this flat, boring landscape. Dinosaurs once roamed here in great numbers. And these dinosaur tracks tell us that the area was a bit different in the past. This narrow canyon is just a few miles north of downtown Dallas. And in it, there are some rather large saltwater seashells encased in the Austin Chalk. That's a type of limestone that was deposited when the Gulf of Mexico reached all the way up here, hundreds of miles from its current coastline. But Mother Nature isn't always that patient. Sometimes she reacts quickly, violently. 70-ish thousand years ago, 19 Colombian mammoths, including several juveniles, were just going about their day when they were suddenly caught in rapidly rising river water near present-day Waco. Their remains weren't found until 1978. In October of 2019, the speed and power of Mother Nature revealed itself in Dallas. While millions were watching the Cowboy game on TV, an unexpected storm popped up. The NBC affiliate didn't bother to interrupt the game, but luckily I changed the channel and learned that a tornado was spotted five miles east of my home. And it was heading east at 25 miles per hour. And the more eagle-eyed viewer may have noticed that there was very little soil above the rock in that Dallas Creek bed. That's one reason we don't have basements here. So we're very vulnerable to tornadoes. And some more storms that are going to be firing up. We Meanwhile, more tornadoes were forming. But three minutes later, I was in a Walmart underground parking garage, and I was safe. The storm was wreaking havoc just two and a half miles away. I got there shortly after. Lightning from the retreating storm helped to illuminate the collapse of a Home Depot. Reports of downed trees, power outages, and the destruction of homes and businesses now flooded the airwaves. The next morning, we could see what really happened. 10 tornadoes damaged at least 750 homes, about 2,000 buildings in all. Several schools were destroyed, forcing officials to find places for thousands of kids to study in the middle of the school year. Many businesses were hit thousands would have no place to work. Yeah. 
Landmarks like the Preston Royal Shopping Center will never be the same. and you don't realize how important little things like street lights are until they no longer work. It now took about 10 minutes to go through just one intersection. Commutes became very long. $30 million in damage was done to street lights alone. Of the 10 tornadoes, the one in Dallas was the most powerful, an EF3 with winds of up to 140 miles per hour. Its destructive path was about 15 miles long, but luckily only 100 to 200 yards wide. Much of the damage was caused by flying debris, some of which was cars. Radar tracked lighter debris up to 20,000 feet above the ground. Debris shattered windows and damaged roofs far from the tornado itself. It's really quite amazing that no one was killed or even seriously hurt. For some, it was just another Instagram moment. Shop owners told me that after it happened, local kids came out and it was like a big party. While they were attempting to grasp what had happened to their livelihood and to their life's work. While the storm was still flashing, crews were standing by to begin repairs. And repair they did. And some businesses stepped up with free food for first responders and repair crews. Power was restored neighborhood by neighborhood. Streets were cleared of debris and 100-year-old oak and pecan trees were hauled away. Roofs were patched, but it will be months before some homes can be rebuilt. And perhaps years before schools can be replaced. Mother Nature is powerful. Sometimes she takes her time, and sometimes she's a bit snippy. I hope this is a subtle reminder that she should never be underestimated.